Hello, welcome to another video. So we'll be taking the derivative of inverse cosecant of x. So it's the inverse function of the reciprocal of sine. What is the derivative? Okay, um, we'll just go through the same process that I've taken you through um, while doing for inverse secant, inverse sine, inverse tangent, the same procedure, and we're going to get our answer. But there's something in particular I would like to uh, pay attention to this time. You will have an absolute value sign in your answer, and I want to explain why there has to be an absolute value sign. It's a simple explanation, which I ignored um, in the previous cases, but I think I'm going to explain why all of these functions must have absolute value signs when they show up. So the first thing, as usual, is to rewrite this expression and say that uh, we're going to say let y be equal to cosecant inverse of x. So because this is the inverse uh, cosecant, we'll have to say, let's take the cosecant in order to undo this cosecant inverse. We're going to say the cosecant of y will be equal to the cosecant of cosecant inverse of x. Okay, so we take the cosecant of both sides and what do we get? Here we, it, it stays as cosecant of y but on the right hand side this undoes this and what you have left is just x. So remember this cosecant y you can actually rewrite. Well, so for me I leave it this way or I tell myself do I know the derivative of cosecant y? For many students, you may have forgotten. So what I would recommend is use the quotient rule. So rewrite cosecant y as 1 over sine y. So watch this. So I'm going to say 1 over sine y, because that's what this means, is equal to x. Then I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. So I'm going to say d dx of 1 over sine y equals d dx of x. So, now what's the derivative of this? Well, this is what I would do. I would use the quotient rule for this. Remember, if you have this memorized, you know the derivative of cosecant y. Just go ahead and do it, okay? But in order to take the derivative of this, watch what it's going to be. It's going to be, the quotient rule means you're going to write sine y multiplied by the derivative of the numerator, which is going to be 0 minus, you're going to take the derivative of sine y, the derivative of sine y is, is going to be cosine y times y prime, because it's implicit differentiation, okay, with respect to x rather, and multiplied by the top, which is 1. And then what you have here all over the square of the denominator, which is sine y all squared. Okay, and the right hand side is going to be 1. So if we clean up, what do we get? We're going to end up with this is 0 minus this. So we're going to have y prime cosine y negative over sine y squared equals 1. So if we solve for y prime, what should we get? We're going to end up with this implies that y prime equals, you're going to get um, sine y squared divided by, there's going to be a negative here, negative cosine y. So negative cosine y. Okay, that's our derivative. So we can say that y prime, which will be this, because this is y prime. Okay, this implies y prime. That derivative will be equal to sine y squared over negative cosine y. Okay, I'm going to put a negative here, just a big negative. So what is sine y? Well, let's go back here. We know that cosecant y is equal to x. So let's make a triangle. Let's do it here. So this is the angle y. Cosecant is the, the reciprocal of sine. 
So sine should be opposite over hypotenuse. So cosecant is going to be hypotenuse over opposite. So, um, and we said that cosecant y is x, which is x over 1. So, which is going to be this. So this is our x over 1. That's cosecant, the opposite of sine. And then by Pythagorean identity, this is the square root of x squared minus 1. So from this, we can find all of these. So what is sine y? Sine y is opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to be 1 over x squared divided by what is cosine y? Adjacent over hypotenuse, which is going to be the square root of x squared minus 1 over x. Well, if you multiply the top, well, you see that this is going to be minus 1 over x squared divided by square root of x squared minus 1 divided by x. If you multiply the top and bottom by x squared, you're going to end up with minus 1 over, if you multiply this by x squared, this cancels one of the x squareds, and you're going to have just x over square root of x squared minus 1. Okay, so where does the absolute value come? Because this is your answer. So we can actually say that ddx of cosecant inverse of x is equal to 1 over, let's put a negative here, negative x times the square root of x squared minus 1, then we have our absolute value here. Okay, there's going to be absolute value here. Okay, and by the way, whatever you have here has to also be values of x that are, that satisfy the condition such that when you take the square root of this, this number here has to always be greater than this, which means that x has to be greater than plus or minus negative 1. So we're going to say that x is greater than plus or minus 1, okay? Not, that will not work. Absolute value of x. This absolute value of x has to be greater than 1. That's a better way to put it. So where does the absolute value come in here? It comes from the nature of all inverse functions because that's something I didn't talk about because the first few ones I did were not necessary because they were all positive or all negatives. Now, pay attention to this. The graph of sine is like this. So when plus the graph of sine, it's something like this. So the graph of, of a cosecant is something like this. You see, it goes like this. So you have vertical asymptotes here, and you have vertical asymptotes here. But whenever a function has an inverse, so we're looking for the inverse of cosecant, if we get rid of this part, okay, and we just stay with this part. For this function to have an inverse, it, we only have to take the part that, started, that, fulfills the, that passes the horizontal line test, which makes it a one-to-one -one function. And for it to have a one-to-one -one function, we have to delete some parts of it. So if we delete this part of this, and we delete this part of it, so you notice that our graph is going to go from um, let's say this is negative pi over 2, and this is pi over 2, and you notice that the range is anything that is beyond negative 1, or below negative 1, and anything above negative 1. That's, the that's why this is coming up here. However, by the time, you, you notice that the slope of this function, what do, you, what do you see there? The slope of this is always negative, always negative. The slope of cosecant is always negative. Now, when you sketch the graph of, um, of inverse cosecant, it is also always negative. Let's assume we have our line y equals x here. You notice that we're going to have a graph that looks, uh, what does this look like? Something like this. You see that? That's the graph of, of this. It looks like this. And this one, if you try to... It looks like this. So we have a graph that is like this and like this. In either case, these slopes are negative. 
So the derivative of a function that is always looking this way must always be negative. And that's why you have to be careful when you take the derivative because if this x is negative, well, this function will become positive. That is, the derivative will become positive, which nullifies the whole experience of us restricting the domain. So remember, for all inverse functions, the graph cannot, the slope cannot change from positive to negative. If it's negative, it will stay negative all the time. If it's positive, it will stay positive all the time. So in order to ensure that this is always negative, you have to say, hey, whatever value of x, whatever value of x you adopt must always make it possible for this function to stay negative. So if this negative is always there, this expression has to always be positive. And this guarantees always positive, and this also guarantees always positive. That is the reason why we put the absolute value sign. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.